a pilgrimage reinvigorates spiritual power of an aspirant. Mm-hmm. Narada Bhakti Sutras proclaim that holy men who experience the divine transform the places visited by them into Tithas or centers of pilgrimage. When that is the case with holy men, what to speak of an incarnation like Swamiji? Swamiji is the veritable incarnation of the divine as pronounced by Sri Ramakrishna himself. Undoubtedly, the rocks on which he sat, the paths on which he trod, the villages through which he passed, the rivers in which he bathed, the trees under which he meditated, became holy places worthy of veneration. These places became sources of immeasurable joy and inspiration to devotees. Ridgery Manor and Thousand Island Park were two such places sanctified by Swamiji. Swamiji lived here, meditated here, walked here and taught some of his disciples here. It is with this view we had taken a trip to Ridgely Manor and Thousand Island Park under the leadership of Swami Ishatmanandaji. Surely we felt an aura of the divine presence of Swamiji here and returned with elevated minds full of divine inspiration. This moment we are in the fish kill area and the, the um, quality inn that is our first stop. Uh, seven of us we are all going to on pilgrimage to Swamiji's places. Uh, we will we'll go to that the nearby place where Swamiji stayed for a long period of time. And when we reach over there, we will mention about it. And then again, another place where Swamiji stayed, another for a long period, recovered his health and gave a wonderful high spirit of Advaita to a, a, a very limited number of disciples, hardly 12. But that was published in a book form that's called Inspired Talks. We are on the way. Where is Orun? So we could... So this is our team. And Kishore is absent because he is the photographer. <laughs> Vishwacharyam Jagadvandyam Vivekananda Ropinam 
ವೀರೇಶ್ವರಾತ್ ಸಮುತ್ಪನ್ನ ಸಪ್ತ ಋಷಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದ ಪದಮಾಕ್ಷ ಗೌರವಿಗ್ರಹ
And um, I figure for several reasons. One, obviously, it was Swamiji. And two, um, he was an extremely charismatic speaker. Mm. And three, unlike today, in those days, they had never heard anything like it before. Yeah. See, now Swamiji has been successful, Swamiji and everybody else. And so the basics of Vedanta philosophy are kind of mated into the culture. And even if people don't believe it, they know what it is. And words like mantra and guru and pundit have come into the American language. Mm-hmm. Wrongly, but they have. <laughs> and um, so it's not like just sitting down and hearing something you heard before. These people, for the most part, had never heard it before, many of them. So it was fascinating to them. And sometimes, like uh, Miss Dutcher at Thousand Island Park, really challenging. Mm-hmm that they didn't like what they heard, but nevertheless, they heard it. <laughs> so that... Dharma bheda bhanjana bandi jagat bandana Dharma bheda bhanjana bandi jagat bandana Maud Stam, the young artist, she writes in her reminiscences. Uh, One morning, Swamiji burst into the morning room Mm. and started talking about liberty. And this is what she quotes him. Liberty, what do I care if Muhammad was a good man or Buddha? Does that alter my own goodness or evil? Let us be good for our own sake, on our own responsibility, not because somebody way back there was good. Mm. So that was his thought for the day for that, the ladies. Well, the other thing is, so Josephine McLeod also had the same reminiscence. And so we know this one happened. Basically, are the tour guides. Okay. And uh, then in the wintertime, uh, sometimes we even have to close this place in the winter because there's so much snow. So there's... Was Swamiji's Pine. And it was about 100 feet high, and you can see it in the pictures of Ridgely. Uh, what happened was the year before I came here, it was struck by lightning, and only half of it died that time. And then two years ago, it was struck by lightning again because these kinds of pines are lightning magnets. And so slowly, slowly it died, and we had to cut it down. I stuck it on Vivekananda Retreat's. Uh, YouTube page, The Falling of Swamji's Pine. So this was the original... This uh, was the sapling, sapling from the Green Acre. Yeah, that Josephine McLeod theoretically brought from Green Acre to here. Now it's interesting because um, we always heard that she brought several and one survived. But Sister Nivedita's letters um, say to She's written one to Josephine who says, hug the tree for me. And this, no, this is the real, this is the one we're going to This, these are fields. So they like come into the Yeah, we have an agreement with the farmer that he gets the hay and we don't have to pay him to mow. So this is the road. Yeah, so this is the road for me to be back and under walking. And you can be sure that you see no hunting except for God. Just see that? 
but um, there were two entrances. You came in the main one, but this road went all the way out through to another road, and um, that was probably the way that they came most times from the train station because it's closer. Now we can't do that, but in Swamiji's day, this road went from Leggett Road to a road called Carlton. And the Leggetts owned so much property over there. Looks like oh. it's a vegetable garden. Yeah, that's our vegetable garden over there. They just sprayed manure on this field. You can, you can smell a little manure. Akhandamandalakaram Vyaptam Yena chara charam tat padan darshitam yena tas mai shri gurave namaha tas mai shri Gurave Namaha um, Yeah, so the way this works, all the furniture in this room, obviously not the, the pictures, but everything else was in here when Swami Vivekananda came. And so these were the chairs, this was the table, these were the sideboards that I believe were antique even in his day. So here's how it worked. Um, Mr. Leggett would have sat there. Betty, his wife, would have sat here because the way the, butler, the butler's kitchen, that's where the food is served from. And the Swamiji sat on her right. We used to say one of these two, but I just read definitely there. Of course, that doesn't mean that any one of these chairs could have been there, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, the famous story, as we all know, is that he wasn't, the way the etiquette worked in those days is until the hostess left the table, nobody else leaves. You can't just excuse yourself and walk away, unless you had some place to go. And, uh, but Swamiji was exempt from the rules, that was one of the agreements that he could do as he liked. And so he apparently often ate and then just went away. <laughs> and uh, Betty liked to show him off to her friends. And so if he looked like he was gonna leave, she knew he liked ice cream, particularly chocolate ice cream. <laughs> and so she would say, there'll be ice cream for dessert, and he would wait. <laughs> he wouldn't leave. So that was her strategy to keep him from walking away from the table. <laughs> and then, um, the other wonderful story about this room is comes from Maud Stum. Do you know who Maud Stum was? Yeah, she was an artist. Yeah, she was an artist, and she was staying here. She was young, and she wasn't actually staying at Ridgely. She was staying in the village, and she would come over here, and she gave Swamiji uh, art lessons. But unfortunately, if he all the drawings that he made uh, don't exist anymore, or in somebody's stuff that they've never found, so. Mm -hmm. Um, you do the picture of uh, our Turiyananda, right? Yes. Yes. Well, there's two versions. So, uh, according to Navedita, I think uh, Maud Stone did this. But I don't yeah, know, maybe both of them did. Who maybe knows? Both maybe maybe they both did. Maybe that she was it. trying and then yeah. she gave the finish. I could that. invent a story and say they commandeered Swami Turiyananda into proposing yeah. to them. Yeah. Like, hey, oh, sit yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. So I maybe they, they both did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, God. 